This is how I would learn to code if I could start over. If you're new here, hi, my name is Sajad. I'm a computer science master's graduate from Georgia Tech. I landed my first big tech software engineering job at the age of 20, earning $220,000 every single year. I've worked at big tech companies such as Amazon, and now every single day, I help hundreds of thousands of students land their role in big tech. And yes, I know coding can feel scary and overwhelming at first, but Think of it like learning to drive. At first, everything seems unfamiliar, but with the right guidance and some practice, it starts to make sense. So in this video, I'm gonna break coding down step by step. No experience or knowledge required. Plus, at the end of the video, I'll share an exclusive clip from an interview I had with the creator of C Sharp and TypeScript, coding languages used by millions of people, just to throw in extra value for you guys. So just sit back, relax, take notes, and let's get into it. The first step to learning how to code is picking a programming language. And this is exactly like picking your first car. You want something that's beginner friendly, reliable, gets you where you need to go without overwhelming you. And if I could start over, I would begin with Python. Think of it like driving a modern sedan with the automatic transmission, power steering, and all the safety features. The syntax in this language is so clean and readable that you can focus on actual problem solving instead of dealing with confusing punctuation and wording. Personally, when I started coding in ninth grade, I began with Scratch, which felt like learning how to drive a go-kart at first. It helped me learn the mechanics without any syntax, and I actually got to learn this through CS50, Harvard's free course. But if I were learning to code in 2020, 25, I'd probably spend maybe like a max of two or three weeks on that course, then get straight into Python. And if you're thinking about other languages, I'd say JavaScript is like learning on a sports car. It's exciting because you see immediate visual results when building websites, but it has some quirky behaviors that can confuse beginners. Java is like learning on a solid, reliable truck. It's verbose and strict, but it teaches you beneficial habits and discipline. C is like learning to drive a manual transmission race car. You'll stall a lot, question your life choices, and wonder why everything is so hard. But hey, if you make it through, you'll definitely be a coding expert. Assembly is like trying to drive a car on a highway, but instead of a gas or electric car, you have to push that car with your own hands. Yeah, I pray no one ever has to go through that. Now, just like you wouldn't learn how to drive without proper instruction and a safe practice environment, the second step to learning to code is finding the right resources and environment. And here's actually where a lot of people make a huge mistake. So there's a psychological concept called cognitive load theory. And I've seen many people struggle with this, including myself. So cognitive load theory says that your brain has limited processing capacity. When you're learning something new, you're using almost all of it just to understand the basics. When driving a car for the first time, you'd think, which pedal is the brake? How hard do I press the gas? When do I check the mirrors? What are all these dashboard lights and controls? You start stressing and overworking your brain even if you're just in a parking lot. And when you're learning to code, you face a very similar issue. You're trying to understand the syntax, the logic, the error messages, the problem statement, the development environment, and terminal commands. It's like whenever you feel like you're learning something new in code, you realize it's just the tip of the iceberg and there's so much hidden underneath. And to make this worse, a lot of people think it's normal that you need to go through tutorial hell. You need to struggle through every textbook, tutorial, video, professor, and absorb everything as if you're a sponge. And this actually significantly increases cognitive load. And at a certain point, you're doing more harm than good. And this can actually get worse if you have imposter syndrome and compare yourself to other people, especially early on in your career. You might be seeing people who are doing way better than you very quickly, and they just understand things way better. And in turn, this actually causes extraneous cognitive load, which is even more unnecessary mental burden that doesn't even help you learn. For example, if someone else succeeds in learning how to code, that doesn't help me, and that doesn't harm me. It only hurts me if I compare myself with them and I allow myself to think that I'm stupid for some reason. So the solution to all of this tutorial hell cognitive load comparison and imposter syndrome is to follow the 70-30 framework, where you spend 70% of your time building and 30% of your time consuming new information. Building things gives your brain concrete examples to anchor the abstract concepts to. Plus, it gives you a sense of accomplishment and progress to help you stay mentally strong. Plus, it shifts the main focus to, oh, I don't know anything, to, I know stuff, and I'm gonna build with what I know. And throughout this process, you'll actually learn more than just watching tutorials. And particularly if you wanna get started in this building with Python, I recommend you use Cody.tech. They give you mini bite-sized lessons, and in each module, it teaches you a lesson, quiz, 
and project so you understand it super, super well. Plus, if you ever get stuck, check out their AI assistant, which serves as a mini tutor for you, helping you solve the problem. The best part is they're 100% free, but if you want premium features like unlimited AI queries, you can use this code on the screen for 20% off. So now that we have confidence in our basics, we know how to navigate a simple parking lot. Now we need to level up and take it to the big roads, the real world. So step three in learning to code is developing legit end-to-end -end real world projects. And no, this doesn't have to get super complicated. You don't need to create the next Amazon or the next Google. I mean, if you do, that would be cool and you should definitely give me a cut. But at this stage, I'm more concerned with what technologies you use and making sure you create something that teaches you the most. And one example project you can do is a simple personal expense tracker. This will teach you a little bit of backend, a bit of frontend, and relevant skills in Python that you can apply in the future for a software engineering internship or job. Also on this point, if you're like, oh, I don't want to build a personal expense tracker, it's so boring. Well, I got you. I want you to check out this GitHub repository called Build Your Own X. It gives you excellent real world projects in many different coding languages like Python, JavaScript, C Sharp, and through this you can develop some cool things that will actually look impressive on your resume. Remember, it's not about what exactly you build right now, but how you build it. So now, as cool as coding is, you don't want to be learning or building in isolation for too long. For example, when learning how to drive, you can technically figure it out on your own, but without a driving instructor to support you, it's way harder. And I've given this example before, but if you have five close friends who are obsessed with desserts, candies, and sodas, you're probably going to become the sixth. You're going to start indulging with them, you'll learn all the best dessert spots, you'll become a connoisseur of sweets, and you might end up even having a little dessert belly to show for it. Now, flip that. If your circle is filled with people learning to code, building projects, and pushing each other to grow, well, you're probably gonna get good at coding fast. So step four is to network with other coders. And this doesn't have to be some magical friend group. It could be classmates, people you meet in Discord servers, or online communities. Set up regular co-working sessions, build something together, create shared goals, and track your progress as a group. And group learning, truthfully, is one of the best ways to learn. I remember before one of my summer internships, I didn't really know JavaScript or React.js, but I was given a project in which I had to develop a front-end web application in this language framework. And thankfully, I was surrounded by senior engineers with over a decade of experience in this language. And matter of fact, instead of taking months to learn the basics of this language, within just a few weeks, I was building real world applications quickly in React JavaScript because I was surrounded by people who were motivated and knowledgeable. And surrounding yourself with other people also increases your accountability because the truth is people flake on commitments to themselves all the time. For example, if I told myself, hey, I want to lose weight and start working out, I may or may not do it. But if I tell my friend group that, hey guys, I'm going to lose weight and start working out, all of a sudden the stakes are higher because I know that if I don't lose weight and start working out, they're gonna make fun of me the next time I go out. All right, so now that we're proficient in coding, there's actually something huge that you need to be aware of. So just like when you're learning to drive, a lot of things can go wrong. You might hit a curb, you might dent the car, you could get into an accident. And learning to code is no different. You might find a bug, try to fix it, break something else, then try to fix it and then all of a sudden the whole project is combust. And it can get frustrating, and for a lot of people, that's actually where they give up. So for step five, I want to cover two huge mistakes to avoid when learning to code. But don't hear it from me. I recently talked to a coding expert, specifically Anders, the literal creator of coding languages like C Sharp, TypeScript, and Turbo Pascal, which millions of people and all the top tech companies use to code. And when I asked him simply, what are the most common mistakes people make when learning to code? Here's what he told me. Not spending enough time learning the basic principles and really sort of understand what is it I'm doing? What is a variable really? And what is an array? And once you grok that, then it doesn't really matter what language you're in. That's just a veneer. If you don't get that deeper understanding of it, then you're sort of thinking at that veneer syntactic level of what do I have to write, but you're not really understanding why you're writing it. And I thought that was really interesting, especially at a time when there's a whole trend of don't learn to code. AI will do it for you. But truthfully, the most knowledgeable people in the industry know their fundamentals. No matter how advanced AI gets, and trust me, it's already transforming the industry, your fundamentals 
are your foundation. AI might hallucinate, it might break things, and when that happens, you need to know what's going on under the hood so you can fix it. In fact, I see a lot of beginners say, I love coding, I'm gonna learn Python, Java, JavaScript, C Sharp, C++, all at once, so everyone's gonna think I'm a coding genius and Google's gonna hire me. But hate to break it to you, all that knowledge with no depth of foundation means nothing. The second mistake a lot of people make when learning to code is overlooking clear English communication. And this might sound a little weird if you're like, I want to learn Python. Why do I need to be good at English? Like I said before, learning your fundamentals is very, very essential. But at its core, computer science, coding, and programming are all designed for problem solving. You have a problem, you need to create a solution, and we just use code as a medium to come up with the solution. And truthfully, if we weren't solving problems, coding might not even be a thing. So here's the exact three-step practice that you should follow the next time you write code. Say, for example, you receive a problem. Given a list of numbers, return the sum of all the numbers. Step one, explain the solution in plain English. No coding just yet. For example, we're given a list of numbers. Our job is to add all the numbers together and return the result. We can go through the list one by one, keep track of the total as we go, and at the end we'll return the final total. Step two, pseudocode. This is like if Python and English had a baby. It looks a little like code, a little like English, but it helps you organize your solution. So in this example, we'd set a total variable equal to zero and iterate through the list by saying for each number in the list, add the number to the total, at the end, return the total. Step three is translate pseudocode into real code. And through this process, this will help you deeply understand the problem. And it'll make your code so much cleaner for yourself and anyone else reading it. And through clear communication, you'll get so far ahead and you'll be that amazing six-figure software engineer. Once again, don't forget to give me a cut. Well, that's about all I have in this video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. If you're interested in my absolutely free tech newsletter, link will be down below in the description. And if you wanna get good at coding and treat it almost as if it's an addictive video game, you might wanna watch this video right here.